just how much longer the Spurs need to get out of this rebuild. Could it just be after one season? You are locked on Spurs, your daily San Antonio Spurs podcast. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Hey, this is Chris Sabat, and you're listening to Locked On Spurs with Jeff Garcia. Welcome back to Locked On Spurs right here on the Locked On NBA Network. I'm your host, Jeff Garcia, Spurs writer for Kens 5 San Antonio. Glad to have you back. Hope everybody had a great weekend. We'll get you started on the work week right here on Locked On Spurs. We thank you for making Locked On Spurs your first listen each and every day. Free and available wherever you get podcasts, Google Play, Stitcher, iTunes, Kens 5 Plus app, and much, much more. Hey, what are we talking about today? We're going to be looking at the Spurs currently. Uh, is this it? Do they just need pretty much just one season? And yay, we're out of the rebuild and playoff spots one through six. Here we come in the West. Or do you think it may be in about a couple more years before that happens? Like when will the Spurs be that perennial playoff team they once were? And then we're going to put in the spotlight Jeremy Sohan. Ask our guest what's one thing he wants to see from Sohan to improve on next season. Uh, you know, before we bring in our guest, I definitely want to thank you again uh, for making Locked On Spurs the first listen. We appreciate you. Subscribe as much as you can. And yeah, spread the word. Locked On Spurs will be coming to Spurs throughout the entire season. But the business at hand. Uh, Wimby's here. The Spurs youngs. The, the, well, the youngins, they got a lot of seasoning last year. I mean, that was a slow cook in the oven. That barbacoa beer from San Antonio was getting nice and tender. That, that steak was getting juicy because... That's all they got. They got a lot of cooking last year. They took lumps. They took a beat down. They took losing streaks. They took just bone-crushing losses. And hopefully that'll translate into this upcoming season. Now you throw in Wimby, you throw in Devin Vassell, Sohan, Malachi Branham, what, what, what have you. And yay, the Spurs are looking good, right? Yeah, yeah that, this should be it, right? One more season? Uh, I hate to break it to you, but it may be longer than that. The This Spurs team, uh, you know, I, I would guess – that perhaps they're not even done tinkering with the roster yet. I mean, there's still, there's still stuff has to happen. So you could still see roster uh, ups and downs, fluctuations, as this team is currently in the rebuild. Yes, this team is still in a rebuild mode. Maybe it's not blaring with neon signs and horns going off saying, we are in rebuild mode. No, perhaps it's calmed down, but they're still in a rebuild mode. They still need to see what players or potential players down the road could fit with a possible franchise altering player like Wimbayama. You know, it could be what they got right now. It could be somebody else in free free uh, agency. It could be somebody at the trade deadline. We don't know. But this team still needs more seasoning. Uh, Wimby needs more seasoning. He looks like he's ready to go, but he's still going to have to have, you know, his lumps and get uh, to used to the NBA play. Uh, 82 games, that's something he's probably never uh, experienced. Uh, fortunately, he sat out of playing in the FIBA tournament this season. That'll help, but we'll see what happens. And we'll, in just a few short weeks, we'll find out exactly what he's going to be made of. But even at that, you know, I, I think it'll probably be another year before the Spurs really start knocking on the door as that team to watch in the Western Conference. So enjoy this upcoming season. It is exciting. I'm excited. I know you guys are. You know, Wimby era begins. But keep in mind, the Wimby era begins, yes, but the rebuild continues. Let's go to bring in our guest. He is Joe Garcia of Two Shots Podcast. Where is Joe? There he mm -hmm. is. What's going on, Joe? Hey, what's up, Jeff? Thanks again for having me on, man. I appreciate it. It's always a good time to talk San Antonio Spurs basketball with you. Joe, would you be happy to know I got a new microphone? I know. I saw that before we started the show. I said, man, Jeff, yeah. you got a new mic. For those of you who don't know, my, my mic broke, and that was not a shock to Joe Garcia. That mic broke. I showed him that it was in pieces, literally in pieces. Yeah, well, you and tech just don't mix, man, period. Not at all. Not at all. I'm cursed, man. I am so cursed. <laughs> it's like I, I could touch you know, the computer right now. So that probably would happen. You know, I'm just surprised we didn't down. have tech issues for this episode. I'm surprised, too, Joe. Let's not jinx it. Yeah. Let's not jinx it. Let's keep on going. He is Joe Garcia with, uh, with uh, the Two Shots uh, podcast. Network as well as the Alamo City Sports Podcast on YouTube. Follow Joe on Twitter at Two Shots Podcast. Joe, the Wimby era begins in just a few short weeks. It's almost here. Off season is almost over, but a lot of fans are excited, and I get it. You understand it. I get it. The listeners get it. The watchers get it right now. Viewers, but Joe, are you content? Are you ready to say 
The Spurs just need one more year, and that's it. We're done. Playoffs, here we come. No, man. I mean, it's going to be a slow uh, process. I mean, I'm sure that having Wembeyama goes ahead and moves uh, the needle a little bit you know, further right. along. But regardless, the Spurs still have some areas that they need to go ahead and and help de- the team needs to develop a little bit more. And one of those things is that's just going to be experience. You know, we have yeah. a good young core, but they're not going to learn the what they need to really do to move to that next level until they start going ahead and losing some of these close games. Yeah, a yeah. lot of heartache still. And that's something that could be a testament that happened when you had the big three era as well. Before they became the, the dominant yeah. powerhouses that they were, they still had to go ahead and have a lot of experience. And some of those experiences means losing some really close games and some heartbreakers. I think that's still going to happen with this young core. While I think they're going to be a lot better, they're going to be more competitive. Mm -hmm. I still think they're a couple seasons away from finally being in that conversation of, hey, this Spurs team can be in that play-in, or they could be that eighth seed, that seventh seed, that sixth seed. I think you're still a couple seasons away, but I'm still excited to see this team compete, man. I really don't have a lot of expectations going into this season. And like I said, you know, to you before, being a season ticket holder for the first time, it's exciting <laughs> just to yeah. see that this Spurs team start this new Wemby era. You know, that's what I'm really excited for. But for them to really be that team, you know, that you can say, oh, they've made the turn. They've made that leap. I think they're still a couple seasons away. Yeah. Yeah. yeah look, it, it's exciting. I, I get it. You know, I'm excited, but it's different eras. You know, I think a lot of Spurs fans are still remembering the big three era. You know, David Robinson was here and then Timmy came and boom, it was just like that. The Spurs started winning games, winning uh, divisions, getting to playoffs almost every season and winning titles. Whole other set of circumstances here. Joe, you know this. I know this. The watchers know this right now that, hey, you know, eh, you know, there's no David Robinson currently on, on the t- team for Wimby to pair with. There's no season vets like a, like an Avery Johnson, a Sean Elliott uh, on this current roster to help uh, boost the Spurs' uh, odds into getting out of the rebound, rebuild. So Wimby's joined a young team. Wimby's joining a team that's just coming off getting you know destroyed almost nightly, and they're looking for uh, theirs now. They're looking to become their own. And guess what? Wimby's now the center of peace now. So now everything shifts to him now. So perhaps, you know, players like Selhan and, and Vassell and Keldon and Trey Jones, they're going to have to now adapt their game to him to help him. So there's another learning curve. I think we're seeing the we're going to see the Wimby learning curve. But, Joe, what about the team learning curve now that a possible franchise player is in San Antonio? Oh, yeah, that's what I'm talking about, you know, that experience and the only way you're going to get that much needed experience in, in order to learn what you need to to yeah. move the whole team up to that next level of, of competition is going to be losing close games, getting yeah. embarrassed, you know, by some yeah. of the better teams. And, you know, when you have these matchups, when you're looking at some of the more prominent players going up against some of this younger core and they're just getting flat out right embarrassed. I mean, those things need to happen for them to get upset and be like, you know what, that's on me. I know I can play better. And I'm just going to get better from here on out. And these heartbreaking losses and getting embarrassed and whatnot, it's part of the game. And the only thing this young team can do is go ahead and put those losses Mm -hmm. and those embarrassing losses behind them and then just get better. I mean, it's all you can do. You can't go back and change what happened. But moving forward, you can decide to be better, be more competitive and get yourself where you need to be to go ahead and help your team take that next leap. I just think this young core, again, they still need all that experience that's Mm -hmm. the only thing that they're lacking they have the tools as far as their usefulness the athleticism the speed they're Mm -hmm. just lacking that experience and that's something that you can't teach that's something that they have to learn and that's why i'm like it's still going to be a couple seasons away spurs fans are going to be like no we're going to the the play-in tourney right now and i'm (laughs) like they've got to slow your roll a little bit even though they will be more competitive there's still a growing process that needs to play out here like you're saying and I'm saying. So yeah. Spurs fans just need to enjoy the ride for what it is. He is Joe Garcia with Two Shots Podcast. Follow him on Twitter at Two Shots Podcast. When we get back, we're going to continue our chat about the Spurs and the rebuild and then get into some Sohan talk. And if good time is available, we'll get into some Spurs news and notes that you may have missed. Hey, I want to talk to you about Ibotta. Picking up burgers and hot dogs for a summer barbecue? You know you're already doing it, so why not get cash back for it with Ibotta? 
look, it's officially uh, going to be that time where you're going to be looking to stock up on food, you know, school back and, you know, kids are getting all running around and you got to get them uh, some clothes and some perhaps some food or whatever you need. This is where Ibotta comes in. So your closet shouldn't be the only thing growing when you make purchases. You can now also watch your cash back grow with each purchase with Ibotta. Look, Ibotta gives you cash back on hundreds of grocery items from produce to personal care to pantry goods. So you can make sure you're beating inflation no matter what you're purchasing. Either link your loyalty account or upload the receipt after you shop and get your cash back. Super easy. The average Ibotta user earns $120 per year. That could cover the cost of an entire shopping trip. Or you can use that cash back to finally buy that flight you've been eyeing, that game you're dying to go to, or that fancy dinner you've been craving. Other apps give you points that don't amount to much. With Ibotta, you get real cash back that you can cash out to your bank account, PayPal, or gift cards. You can earn cash back on hundreds of online brands and retailers, too, when you start with Ibotta. For example, Lowe's, Macy's, Sephora, Best Buy, and more, all with Ibotta. Right now, Ibotta is offering our listeners five bucks just for trying Ibotta with user code LOCKED when you registered. Just go to the App Store or Google Play Store and download the free Ibotta app. Use code LOCKED, that's I-B-O-T-T-A, in the Google App or App Store and use code LOCKED. Hey, we're back right here on Lockdown Spurs with Joe Garcia, Two Shots Podcast. He'll tell you about his new network on youtube i uh, can't wait to you to hear all that and more and uh yeah we thank you for making locked on spurs the first listen each and every day you guys are the everydayers and uh we'll be getting you through these rough off season days it's almost over it's almost over uh joe we're talking about how long you know will it take for the spurs to get out of the rebuild mode i i think it's just something that is just naturally going to happen uh, you know, a, 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 you know, maybe a smart draft pick and the upcoming drafts, maybe a, a, a trade here, a trade there, just to turn things around for the Spurs. But ultimately, I think it does fall on Wimby. You know, when I think when he is ready to go, because it's all on him. Unlike Duncan, there's no Robinson, as we mentioned. Unlike, um, you, you know, uh, Robinson, there's no Sean Elliott here. You know, Wimby's going to have to really shoulder a lot of the load. So I think a lot of it's going to be hindering or hinging on his timeline, on his learning curve. I think once he gets it, then the Spurs say, okay, we know what he can do. He can do this, he can do this, A, B, C, X, Y, and Z. Let's bring in the players or get these players ready to assist them in that. So I I, I think, man, I'm going to go for it. For this team to be a solid, no doubt, one through six playoff team, not this fringe team, like a solid team, I'm going to say three more seasons. What are you, Joe? I think it's a, on the good timelines, what I was thinking, three to four yeah. seasons away. Okay. They're going to be competitive, no doubt. Jeff, yeah, they're yeah. going to be a fun team to watch. Yeah. But, you know, it's still going to be a couple seasons away. And I'm just going to enjoy the ride. And yeah. like you, just be watching that growth. And then you're going to be able to compare. We're going to be talking about, remember when the Wimby era started and look <laughs> at where they are now, you know, yeah. making those comparisons. That's going to be a fun episode because we'll be able to look at stuff like this and say, yeah, remember right. when and look at them now. Hey, speaking of players that they need to surround uh, Wimby with, let's talk about Jeremy Sohan. So what I've been doing the last few uh, shows, Joe, is picking a player on the roster and then asking our guests, and I chime in too, one thing that they want to see the this player improve upon. So last week we talked about Trey Jones with Vinny Vincetta. He said he wants to see Trey Jones become more of a floor general, like Avery Johnson style. Uh, we talked about uh, Kelton Johnson. I said I need to see him diversify his game. You know, add more facets to it. So we're going to put in the spotlight today, Jeremy Sohan. So he's going into his second season, number nine pick overall uh, a couple of years ago. You know, defensive, great, you know, really solid, can get into some scraps, but also surprised a little bit with his ability to score. So now that he's entering his sophomore season, Joe, what is just one thing you want to see Sohan get better on? And that, that's really not nothing that should surprise Spurs fans. At the end of the day, the only thing he really needs to go ahead and get better on is not his three-point shooting. He needs to just get better at his field goal percentage, you know, mm -hmm. being able to shoot better from the floor. You know, I think going ahead and really improving that mid-range jumper, uh, mm -hmm. you know, maybe from 10, 15, 20 feet, that would really uh, greatly improve his game. Because let's look at, look at it this way. He's not an offensive powerhouse. He has a lot of the other tools that, you know, are very attractive as far as him being a, be able to go out there and play defense and just be oh, yeah. a nuisance. 
to some of the better uh, players out there in the NBA, being able to rebound, being able to pass. He's uh, also a, a player who's also looking to get his teammates involved because he does have a good number of assists per game. The only area that I think is really lacking right now is just going to go ahead and bring up that field goal percentage as far as his mid-range jumper. Mm -hmm. I think that's one of the areas of improvement that could really uh, help him because he's already worked on his free throw shooting. He brought that up dramatically from when he mm -hmm. first started his rookie season to where his rookie season ended um, with the San Antonio Spurs. I think he was shooting something dismal for like 42% from the free throw line, and everybody made fun of him for that one-handed yep. free throw shot. And it went up. His shooting percentage went all the way up to 78.4%. So that's, you know, obviously that's working. It's just that mid-range jumper. Work on that, and I think he's going to be a really, really well-rounded player for San Antonio. And he's also going to be able to help on the offensive end uh, a little bit more, uh, let's say, when it, when it calls for that. Because, again, I'm not looking for him to score double digits every night. But if you can put right. up eight points, six points, on occasion go up for 15 or 20, hey, that's just going to help the team win really close games. So to me, it's just boils down to just that mid-range jumper, man. Yeah, 45% from the field for Sohan last season, 24% uh, from the three line. So there is some work to be done. The good news is this is correctable, Joe. This is nothing dire, you know, not like, oh, no, he's too small. You know, he can never get, you know, nothing like that. This is fixable. So he will get improved uh, little by little from the field. I think he does that. definitely adds more of a dimension to his offensive game. For me, Joe, I would like to see his assists go up more. Last season, his rookie season, 2.5 per game, which is good, respectable. But I like to see it become more i like to see him become more of a facilitator the spurs put him in the point guard spot a, a couple of times more than a couple of times last season let him run the point guard and if he can not only be a defensive force or uh you know uh, you know a pest on on players getting under the skin and almost getting the scraps but adding the offensive side that we saw and then becoming a facilitator man joe dare i say he might become the spurs best two-way player if he keeps up this pace I don't know if he'll ever be the best two-way player, but I think he can be the Spurs' best defensive player. Mm -hmm. They also has a well-rounded uh, offensive game as well, and that could actually make him deadly as well. Mm -hmm. I don't think he's ever going to be that offensive powerhouse, but being able to go ahead and, and knock down an open jumper or knock down yeah. an open three greatly does improve your, your team's chances yeah. of winning, and I think that's where he can yeah. be at some point. I think what I would like to see him fit into the mode of is a, kind of a, a Boris Diaw. But yeah, it does a little bit of everything, yeah. and effectively though, B Dial hit the three, and it was you know pretty consistent. Boom, got that done. F facilitating passing, Dial did that as well. Rebounding, Dial did defense. I mean, the list goes on and on and on. And, and you know, but I think he be, he can be better than uh, Dial as uh, his career progresses. So uh, there you have it. Joe wants to see that uh, field goal percentage go up for Sohan. I like to see the assists go up. Let us know what you think. Let Joe know on Twitter at Two Shots Podcast. Let me know on Twitter at Jeff G Spurs Zone. When we get back, we're going to be talking about some Spurs news and notes. But first, Joe, let's talk about Mudslingers Drive Through Coffee, one of your favorite places to get some coffee, huh, Joe? Oh, yeah. Mudslinger is always a good place to get some coffee. And it's local brew. It's yeah. not a Starbucks or something like that. Yeah. This is local brew that's crafted and it's made with the flavor of San Antonio. Exactly. Mustlingers drive through Coffee is a proud local sponsor of Lockdown Spurs and the first ever to do it. So my tip, my cap to them. Uh, they're open every day, uh, 6 a.m. to 6 p.m. They have a wide variety of drinks. They have the new Sub-Zero drink in honor of UTSA's Frank Harris. Uh, go get it right now. It's a big hit. They have the Alien, which is also in honor of Wemby. It's a full can of Red Bull with green apple and kiwi. It tastes really good. Also, they have the Red Bull Lightning Infused series, which is exactly what you think. If you need to recharge your day, get it going, you got to get yourself the Red Bull Infused uh, Lightning Bolt series. Any flavor will work, but I like the strawberry. But, of course, the OG OJ. Now, I left Joe on for this ad read because if there's anything that Joe knows about is the old school Orange Julius. Well, it's recreated at Muslinger's drive Through Coffee. It's called the OG OJ. Joe, have you had that yet? I haven't had that yet. That's the one thing that I haven't tried, but I do need to try it out because it was going to take me back to those back those days of old when we used to go to Ingram Mall 
Oh, and you yeah. used to be able to get you an Orange Julius. I mean, I still remember yes. the way that the place looks. It's very nostalgic, but yeah, yeah, yeah. that OJ OG, that OG yeah. OJ is really good. Exactly. It is back only at Muslinger's Drive Through Coffee. Uh, you want to find them on Threads, TikTok, Facebook, Twitter. I mean, the list goes on and on. Instagram at Muslinger S A T X. They're located at twenty four zero four Thousand Oaks Drive. That's near twenty one sixty two four, kind of in the Stone Oak area. Really great staff, friendly staff, good menu, dairy alternatives. They got the signature Muslinger coffee. Uh, try it out. That's for your introduction to coffee. Get that. That's what you want to start off with. Trust me, you will enjoy it. Dark chocolate is one of the ingredients. Hint, hint, go get it right now. Again, 2404 Thousand Oaks Drive. Open every day, 6 a.m. to 6 p.m. Life is too short for bland coffee. By the way, Joe, over 300 five-star reviews cannot be wrong. Another reason why. You got to go to Muslinger's Drive Through Coffee. All right, we are back with Joe Garcia, Two Shots Podcast. Follow him on Twitter at Two Shots Podcast. He's going to be talking about his new ish. I guess it's new. I guess technically it's new. YouTube Sports Network, the Animal City Sports Podcast on YouTube. Go check it out. He'll talk about it in just a few seconds. But Joe, let's get into some Spurs news and else while I got you here. Uh, Brandon Gale, the Spurs CEO, currently will be resigning as the Spurs CEO. Effective in uh, November, he's staying on uh, to be kind of an advisor afterwards. But uh, the Spurs did make the announcement. Joe, he was instrumental in helping the Spurs spread their brand in Mexico City. Uh, he was part of the uh, the self patch on the Spurs jersey. Really, was just a good brand uh, brand ambassador. So uh, he's off. Uh, oh, for those of y'all wondering why he's resigning, uh, so he's going to be focusing on his personal life and recharging. Joe. Uh, Got to give it to Gale, man. He really helped the Spurs brand expand uh, tremendously. Yeah, he did. He set the uh, the building blocks for what the Spurs mm -hmm. need to do to take the team in to the modern era, you know, in today's NBA. So I think that's uh, something that's very instrumental uh, to team growth and also to growing the fan base. But more importantly, it's something that the Spurs can go ahead and build upon. So we want to we want to thank him for actually bringing that, you know, knowledge to help the team grow. And, and go into different markets, you know, like you were saying, to Mexico, going into yeah. Austin now, you know. So all these things are instrumental for growth for the team. So can't thank him enough for his contribu contributions uh, for the San Antonio Spurs. I can't thank you enough for your contributions to Lockdown Spurs, Joe. <laughs> I, 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 I can't wait. Yeah, 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 exactly, Joe. We're, we're on this path here. But, hey, uh, keep your eye on this, though, Joe, for next season. Um, even though the Spurs do not have – Right now, an NBA 2K League team, but some of the players will be promoting the NBA 2K League. The NBA announced, along with the in, uh, the NBPA, which is uh, the I guess the uh, the players their their own association, they announced that next season players will now have a path to promote the NBA 2K League. Apparently, Joe, you couldn't do that in the past, but now they can. I, I think I I pretty much know that Wimby will likely be promoting the NBA 2K League because he has a deal with 2K games. So even though the Spurs are not involved in the NBA 2K League as of right now, uh, expect the Spurs and the rest of the all NBA teams to be promoting the league and the teams. Joe, are you a gamer? I game occasionally, man. I don't have enough time to, to devote like I normally did because I'm working mm -hmm. so much. But yeah, when I can get a gaming session in here and there, um, yeah, I'm, I'm, all, I'm all for it, man. I've been hearing a lot of things about a new a new game that's coming out or, or that's been coming out already and i know my friends are already asking me to get on it and that is starfield man so eventually at some point i'll get into that you're gonna cave in joe you're gonna be sucked in and you're not gonna have any time anymore i mean joe what are you doing you want to do lockdown spurs i'm playing star no i can't i'm playing stargate i'm good i'm starfield I'm good. dude that that game is very starfield, uh, i'm sorry very intricate man as far as like your character building and whatnot and actually going out there yeah. and stealing yeah. stuff and getting these ships and all sorts of stuff. I mean, yeah, it's a nerd's paradise, you know? Well, that's right up my league. And I definitely will love that. Hey, and other uh, Spurs news, the Spurs G league team, the Austin Spurs have announced their schedule. I'm getting it right here. Um, keep this in mind. There'll be two home away games. Uh, Austin will be playing in Laredo. This upcoming season is not the first time they've done this. this is actually the second year they've done this. Uh, it's a 34-game regular season, okay? And it's going to start off with the Showcase Cup. 
And then that's kind of like their in-season tournament. And then when that's over, uh, the uh, teams, they reset their uh, their records back to OO, and then they play their regular season. So getting that geared up for you, Joe, here. The uh, Austin Spurs begin the regular season on Thursday, December 28th, 7 p.m., as they take on the South Bay Lakers and should be fun. Joe, it looks like uh, this Austin Spurs team could be a fun team to go catch out in Cedar Park. I think CD Sissoko will likely play a lot of his rookie season there. So there's a reason why to go check out the Austin Spurs. Joe, have you ever been in an Austin Spurs game? Yeah, I've been to Austin Spurs game. It's always a good good uh, outing, man. It's a very, yeah. let's say, family-friendly. And not only that, but the ticket mm-hmm. prices aren't going to be what you're going to be paying mm-hmm. here in San Antonio to see some of these, uh, let's say, yeah. younger players that the Spurs fans are really enamored with. You get to go see them in action, performing at a high level over in you know the Austin Spurs game. So it's definitely right. something that you should experience as a fan. Absolutely. Yeah, I've been to a couple of Austin Spurs games. I made the trek all the way to Cedar Park. Very fun atmosphere. Uh, the Austin Spurs staff are very you know, accommodating, uh, a lot of good food. And you can almost like practically interact with the players. I mean, they have a lot of fan friendly functions where the, the players are there. Go check it out. And look, again, it could be a good product. If Sissoko plays, we would likely Blake Wesley would get some burn there. Uh, yeah, I think it'll be good. Dominic Barlow might get some run there. So this this also Spurs team could be one to watch. And with the Spurs still in rebuild mode, another reason why you check him out, maybe take a sneak peek at potential new players down the road. He is Joe Garcia with Two Shots Podcast. Joe, talk to us about that and what you got cooking on YouTube. Well, we just finished recording the first episode of the new season to kick off the new season of the Two Shots podcast. So that's already up on our YouTube channel. And also you can go ahead and look that up on twoshotspodcast.com. We're also going to be going ahead and recording episodes or live, should I say, live episodes here of the Alamo City Sportscast, which can be featured. It's going to be featured on the Alamo City Sportscast Network, which is on YouTube. You're going to see a whole bunch of different guests. Jeff's one of them. Uh, that mm-hmm. comes out here regularly. So look out for that every day. It's come, it happens Monday through Friday from 12 to 1. Is uh, is, is Jimenez still alive? I don't know, man. He got cooked pretty bad the other day. So I think he's in hiding right now, man. He went to church. So hopefully the <laughs> preacher went ahead and gave, prayed over him and blessed him with some holy water or something. For you, those who do not know, a mutual friend of ours and a frequent guest here in Lockdown Spurs and on Joe's uh, Animal City show, uh, yeah, Mikey Menez uh, took a shot at UTSA at the wrong time, the worst time possible against a in-state rival, Texas State. And yeah, when the uh, when UTSA Alamo Dome announces a record-breaking attendance, and the players and everybody saying that the crowd noise was a factor, yet he Menez said that the UTSA fans were bleep and didn't bring any energy. God, you, Joe, what happened, man? I don't know, man. I think somebody just needed to take away his uh, his phone, man. Drunk- I, I heard I heard rumors of drunk of drunkenness on his part. Yeah, man. Like I maybe think he had the, one too many. The drunk tweeting is a dangerous drug, man. They should have just <laughs> taken the, the phone off. Turn it off. He is Joe Garcia again. Follow him on Twitter at Two Shots Podcast. Hey, we thank you for making Lockdown Spurs your first listen each and every day. Uh, you guys are the everydayers. We'll be back later on this week. Almost going back to five days a week. It's almost there. Just got to get through the next couple of weeks of just the doldrums of the NBA offseason. And you can find us on uh, well, on YouTube, Ken's 5 Plus app, Spotify. I mean, this goes on iTunes. Yeah, we are everywhere. And again, you guys are the everydayers. You all make this happen. So for Joe Garcia, I am Jeff Garcia. We're going to put a lock on this episode of Lockdown Spurs. <music>